see the human interface as being uh, any sort of software and or hardware system that uh, mediates between people and artificial devices, whether they would be uh, mechanical devices, physical devices of one kind or another, or software devices. I think that the scope or boundary of the human interface is really the human being because uh, the limiting factor is our ability to perceive sensory information, uh, to have emotional and cognitive responses to that information. Um, so whether sensory information is being delivered directly to the sense organs or in some way directly to the brain, um, it is the human organism that presents the limit to, to interface technology. What is the scope of the human interface? Well, conventionally people mean how the person interacts with the environment. But to me, this is an obsolete view because there isn't really any person. There's a collection of computers and processes inside the brain. So the interface between the human and the world is the large bundle of nerves that go down the spinal cord and the 12 pairs of cranial nerves that go to the various sensors and defectors in the head. Uh, given that uh, human interface deals more and more with increasingly complex systems, uh, whether purely software or hybrids of uh, software and physical systems, there's a problem of complexity. And the problem here is um, to avoid confusing or disorienting uh, a user. The second problem would be the uh, large volumes of data, whether this is in the form of uh, large archives of data, large volumes of image data or uh, scientific data. One wants to provide a way of navigating through this in a way that is, that is uh, physically meaningful. We're doing a pretty good job of uh, understanding where people move in a space and, and what that might mean. Another area that is, I think, going to be an important issue is dealing with information overload. What do we do with um, all the information coming into people and how are we going to be able to uh, provide them some filtering mechanisms and ways in which to uh, attract their attention to the information and uh, information that's uh, necessary for their, their particular uh, task. I have to say that number one at present is uh, speech recognition and natural language understanding. I think that we're doing a good job in, uh, in other areas of, of sensory perception, displays, technology, display technology, animation, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's sort of like back in the Renaissance when all the artists are trying to achieve realism and all the pictures were beautiful and, and uh, as close to nature as could be. I think that's what's happening right now with ultimate realities and things like that. The future of the human interface research is to recognize that right now everyone's doing childish things of making better pictures for the eyes. Most interfaces, at least up to the present, um, have been direct physical, if not bodily, uh, analogs of the process that was being controlled, such as driving a car, operating consumer devices, and so on. These are generally based quite, quite uh, explicitly on the body and on body motions. But with the kinds of devices becoming very, very abstract, the kinds of interfaces, that one needs become equally abstract and it becomes very difficult then to create and sustain a model for people to use in uh, approaching the interface. I also believe that artificial characters or agents and software will become increasingly important in the near future and we need to do a better job of understanding how to encapsulate certain kinds of knowledge and expertise into 
entities that can be represented to people um, by the computer because this takes advantage of our ability, our social abilities in, in helping us learn how to use an interface. All previous research, without very many exceptions anyway, have been connecting between the human sensory systems and the muscular systems to find better ways to operate on the world and get information from the world. But you're still always working through these cranial nerves and spinal cords. What I think will happen over the next 50 years is we'll learn more and more about implanting electrodes and other devices that can pick information out of the brain and send information into the brain. And ultimately, that way we can pick up not just the actions people propose to perform, but the intentions that they had in performing them. In order to do that, the interface computer has to become smarter and smarter to anticipate the intentions of the person. And when it becomes smart enough, we won't need the person anymore, and the interface problem will disappear. I have certain misgivings here. I think that there's a tendency to to act out or to explore uh, science fiction ideas uh, regardless of any uh, ethical concerns um, and the, the ultimate is obviously some sort of direct coupling between the nervous system and artificial devices and that frankly makes my blood run cold. Although I think that, that human common sense and good judgment will prevail in the end uh, and maybe we won't really achieve that sort of nightmarish state. Um, in terms of ultimate development, I think that the, the only certain thing that, that can be said is that it's unpredictable.